Welcome back my friends, Domination Tips. I'm reporting back with the next episode for you. Because of my steady but very um, limited Wi-Fi connection where the upload capacity is quite not that, um, or the upload speed is not that strong, I will produce for you only short um, episodes about World War Attacks or some guide episodes like I'm doing today. And today we want to talk about our sniper tower as main topic, but I have also some striking, very important and cool new in, uh, informations for you. First information I want to share with you is a common information for everyone. Look at this. When I'm touching my walls, you can see I have again re-implemented the opportunity to upgrade my walls um, with food as well as with, uh, with gold. So um, there was uh, an update in the App Store, where, which I could download and with which I get I re I get my back I get back the opportunity to upgrade the walls for food. All of you I think can get this by uploading the new um, update. So it seems like Nexon has fixed the problems or the issues which occurred with the current update 5.1 and we can again upgrade our walls for food which is quite a very awesome exciting news. Um, a little update about my base. My base, you can see there are very many buildings which I'm upgrading. Cur um, in former times, I was putting on focusing all on my research in the university, but now I decided to go for my defensive buildings to come to the end of the industrial age. I want to go to the global age and there is not very much to do, but there are some buildings which are lasting very long. So for example, the towers and the redoubts. I have only two researches in my library, I uh, in my university running. One is the Iowacha, which is very close, so I'm aiming for getting the Iowacha completely, sorry, completely done in about, um, I don't know, nearly a week, probably some, uh, a little bit less. And when I have done this, I will get the ability to research all food depending researches with one less citizen. This means I can go for my artillery damage, which currently costs about five painful citizens, which is quite which is really strange and awful because no other um, research, no, uh, neither a research nor um, an upgrade costs about five citizens. And so this is really huge, but you are also getting very, very uh, strong uh, advantages for your offense. So I'm also researching at um, Leonardo da Vinci, but I did not start to get my artillery damage or hit points because it costs five uh, citizens and I don't have enough currently. So I went for a university um, hit points research and when I've done here Watcha, I will start with my artilleries. Um, yeah, we are also again in the World War. Like you've probably seen, my last two World War attacks in the World War crashed uh, without any warning. Nevertheless, I had some steady Wi-Fi connection and both attacks crashed immediately. That was very painful. Um, our current World War, I hope it will be better. I will definitely upload the videos for you. One of our strongest players has gone. Um, he's for one week back to his um, old alliance to revisit his friends and say hello. Therefore, we have an exchange player over the here named Z100. Um, it looks like a very strong player. So the first looks tells us uh, most of his buildings are global age max. He has some industrial mortars, but he has indefinitely very, very strong and high buildings. We see both sniper towers are global age max, uh, the cannon towers, the redoubts, um, one uh, tank depot, the bunkers are max, the towers are max. So very strong buildings as well as some very high walls. Um, what, what is very... Uh, uncommon or very strange look at his stables two out of his three stables are poorly low they are just at classical and at medieval age so his defenders which are getting spawned are not very dangerous to any attackers at all so even gunpowder age players can attack him when they are carrying very fast for the one high tank depot as well as the bunkers so i don't i think his uh, his complete um, defense has some disadvantages, so highly dis some highly disadvantages, but uh, he is a um, participant in our current world war, so we will see how strong he is. I'm uh, especially very excited and looking forward for his offense strength, because you can see all of his troops are global age maxed, and because we are in Tilotabi's not so bad attackers, I have very high expectations to him, and let's see whether he can come up and uh, keep his expectations high. 
but let's come to our main topic today. The main topic is the Sniper Tower. Some of my Alliance members as well as some subscribers requested or um, asked me whether I could uh, do a, some guides about. And let's start with some um, common or general information about the Sniper Tower. The Sniper Tower is a building which is getting um, unlocked in the very late game. So from the Industrial Age you will get the first one, the first chance to access them, then you will get a second one in Global Age and the third one in Atomic Age. So it seems like you will get additional ones in every new age. The upgrade stages of a sniper tower are really specific because ordinary you can just in the first age build the building, then you can upgrade it once and then in every new age you can upgrade it once more. But in the, uh, the sniper tower seems to be that you can upgrade it twice, um, twice per age. So in the industrial age you can build and upgrade it and um, after my researches I found that the sniper tower is also being able to upgrade it or to be upgraded in the global age twice. That's not pretty common and I don't know whether these informations are correct. I will show you a graphic later with all of the statistics and the values for the sniper tower. Another very general information about the sniper tower is the sniper tower is a defense building with the highest range of all buildings in the game. So he has um, a it has a very high range to hit some enemies, but it is only hitting the enemies, the furthest enemies. So it's not quite shooting at the enemies at the closest enemies, it's shooting at the furthest enemies. So at the enemies which are in the highest uh, range or in the, which have the highest distance between sniper tower and between the um, yes the unit which is targeted, which it is targeting. Uh, what we can also see, we have a blind spot over here. When we look at the mortars, we have a quite um, little blind spot of about two fields to every side. But at the sniper tower, we have a blind spot of about four fields or four areas to all sides. And that means that there is a really huge blind spot where we come, uh, will come later to, uh, to give some recommendations where to place our sniper towers because it's really essential where to place them. Here I have the graphic for you. I can later um, present you also some defensive replays where you can see how the sniper tower works. But in total we see over here the statistics of the sniper tower. And like I mentioned to you, you can see it in the graphic, the sniper, the sniper tower is only targeting for the furthest enemy. So in this case he's targeting for the healing cards. And that makes the sniper tower so important because in the nearly all of the cases, nearly 100% of all cases, the um, healing cards are the um, enemy units which are quite the furthest ones. So the ones which are driving the last or behind all other enemies. And that means that they are very often getting target, targeted by the the uh, sniper tower therefore you have to care very early for the sniper tower so search yourself an attacking route where you can take out the sniper towers very early or you have to get rid of them by using your planes or some tactics to disable them um, at the chart over here you can see we have the age in which uh, the sniper tower is quite available like I told you in the industrial age you have quite one in the global age you get a second and in the atomic age a third piece of sniper tower which you can place inside your base we have um, two values of damage over here first we have the damage per second also called in the game DPS which also which only means um, which is a quite a common um, a common value which makes it uh, really relative to all other defensive buildings because you have some defensive buildings which are shooting faster other ones are shooting slower and to make all of them comparable um, they use the DPS um, value to make it more relative to all other um, um, defensive buildings but in total this means the sniper tower is only shooting all three seconds so really slow um, um, fire rate or a cadence and this means you have to triple also or to multiply the ordinary dps uh, value by three to get the um, damage a sniper tower is dealing per shot this means a sniper tower is dealing if it's just only built and if it's a sniper tower like over here nothing upgraded just only built in the um, industrial age it is dealing about 270 damage per shot which is quite high if you upgrade it first time in the industrial age you will have about 288 damage per shot 
Um, in the global age, with the first upgrade, 309, 309 um, with the second upgrade, 327, and I have currently no data about the atomic age. I quite also don't know whether you can currently upgrade it. I'm sure in third um, later you will be upgrade, um, able to upgrade it in the atomic age, but currently I don't know whether you can upgrade and when you can upgrade, how often and how strong the values will increase. We also see the hit points over here, 2300, 2400, 2600 and 2800. So the hit points are quite moderate, they are not very low but also not very strong. Um, so it's nothing special about the hit points but the damage per seconds are quite interesting. If we now compare these values with some uh, hit point values of um, other units which the sniper tower is primarily ta um, um, aiming for, you see that industrial age ranged guys, industrial age infantry or um, not infantry, marksmen, so shooters, have about 330 up to 360 hit points I think, depending on the university research. This means even a global age maxed out tower, uh, sniper tower, is unable to kill one of these units with uh, one single shoot uh, shot. You can only do this by activating some blessings or even some coalitions in the world war and then the enemy don't um, mustn't have an own um, offense coalition active but otherwise and in nearly 90% of all cases I think you are unable to shoot um, one enemy ranged infantry with one shot healing cards of industrial age stage have about 600 nearly I think perfectly 600 hit points and in the global age they will have a couple a little bit more so you will see if your um, sniper tower is upgraded to the global age standard you are able to kill industrial healing cards with simply two shots and you will you will be able to kill um, global age healing cards with two shots if you have upgraded to the global age max status and because it's so important to get rid of the enemy healing cards I think upgrading your, um, so your, your sniper tower to the global age max status should be one of your priorities in upgrading all defensive buildings because the, um, the meaning or the function of the sniper tower is that much essential uh, if, we, if we are talking now about um, enemy artilleries or even howitzers they have far above 600 hit points so I think right around a 700 to 800 hit points and this means all of these sniper towers have to do three shots and this um, Therefore, it's quite not depending nearly on which stage they are. Um, to upgrade them is definitely one of my recommendations for you because of the healing cards. But in case of sniping uh, enemy artilleries or how it says, I don't think that it makes a huge difference whether to upgrade it from industrial to global to global age max status. Here I will show you all stages of upgrades so you, that you can easily um, differentiate between all stages of upgrades and so see whether the enemy sniper towers are quite a high or even a low um, danger for you. This is quite the industrial age build status. It just is if you only have built it and nothing upgraded, you see this, this uh, tower has a really... Um, really bright brown color in the next upgrade stages the color will completely change here we see the industrial age maxed out stage so if you have upgraded the tower once in the industrial age and it is the maxed out stage for the industrial age you see this tower quite seems to get uh, from um, of metallic and it will get some darker and even some more gray and that's the um, second stage and the last stage for the industrial age here we have the next stage. This is the first upgrade stage for the global age. And because you don't want to zoom in every time that um, that much to see oh, whether it is a global age or even global age max tower, you can just easily put focus on the barbed wire over here. So if you see the barbed wire right around the uh, house or whatever called on top of it, you see it's a global age um, sniper tower which is only upgraded to the global age first stage and the global age second stage is really easily recognizable when you see down at the... Um, at the foot of the sniper tower and see this little fence over here. So if you see also some kind of fence, barbed wire, whatever, to the foot or even to the um, basement of the sniper tower, you see it is a global age max status and you can see these horns over here or whatever they are called. It looks like some um, some speakers from, from some music boxes. And uh, so you can easily differ differentiate between uh, industrial age, um, simply industrial age status, industrial age maxed out status, uh, global age first stage and global age maximum stage. 
here I have a really cool defensive uh, replay for you. Let's only focus for the enemy troops. Like you can probably see, the enemy has activated um, one blessing, so the enemy troops have um, one more have uh, more health. But nevertheless, you see the sniper tower is getting to shoot very very early, and it is quite um, with very with easy shot um, with every shot he is it is just uh, changing his his aims because this the sniper tower is always aiming for the furthest enemy. So now the uh, the healing cards are getting into range. The first healing card is getting shot, but now other troops are quite the furthest troops. And due to the good position or the location of the sniper tower, which is quite inside of my base, you are unable to reach the sniper tower very easily. Therefore, you have to break at least one wall or get to the entrances in the, in the uh, base where all of the traps are placed. And this means that the sniper tower, nevertheless, of the uh, low cadence, cadence has a very uh, hasty chance to shoot multiple times and get severe damage to the enemy troops because uh, the more often the sniper tower can shoot, the more damage it can deal to the enemy troops. Now let's come to the last part of this video, to some recommendations where to place these sniper towers. And therefore, I can just easily present you some bases out of our alliance, where I can simplify or even show it more simple, um, which important facts you have to uh, think about and to mention when placing some sniper towers. If you are in the industrial age, like I am, you only have one sniper tower and then it is not that much critical where to place them. The first and um, nearly most important aspect about placing one sniper tower is, in my opinion, just to place it to the center of your base. Because the sniper tower has a really, like I told you, a really high blind spot right around it. So if you are placing it very to the outer side of the base, enemy troops can easily rally within or in this uh, blind spot and not getting shot anymore. And um, also the sniper tower is very easy reachable. So in total, make sure that the enemy has at least six range from the outer side to shoot at it um, because there is no troop in the game which can shoot above three fields or even three areas and we see over here one two three four five six here would be the sevens so also if the sniper tower would be placed over here this would be quite okay because at least you have to rally inside the base or crash at least one probably more walls if you're coming from another side to get access to the sniper tower that makes the sniper tower not e so easy reachable for enemy opponents um, in total make sure to have at least six fields of range to the sniper tower and to your outer wall now let's come to my recommendations for all players which have um, more than only one sniper tower so for all global and also for especially for all atomic age players if you have four more than one sniper tower you have quite some more um, methods to um, structure your base and give them some uh, additional positions we can see now over here two kind of uh, locations of sniper towers which are both very useful in this location it's quite not that useful um, but I wanted to show you if you put both of your sniper towers at one side to get this this side very much more protected. This is quite no bad idea, but you have to think about the first disadvantage of placing them at one single side is if you place them too close together, like in this um, uh, like in this example, you ha you it's, it's easily for the enemy to just place one sabotage and disable both at once. So I would in total not locate them so close together. Just give them at least just give them at least two um, two range between them, uh, four range between them, so that you can just or the enemy can just not disable both of them simultaneously. But if you place them both at the uh, same side of the base make sure that you have placed some traps over there because enemies or enemy attackers like me for example which are experienced and which are looking for some specific de uh, defensive buildings which they want to get rid of first of um, instead of other buildings they will very obviously also aim for your sniper towers and if you have placed them both to one side it is very attractive for the enemy to attack from exactly this side and then I would probably just crash one of these walls and 
and rally right inside of these walls to kill both sniper towers because they get in range when I'm inside of the walls. But if the enemy, um, if the base ba uh, build, uh, builder or the creator of the base would now have just placed one barbed wire over here right in the center to anticipate this movement and use it against the attacker, you can easily crash an attack by this because you make it very attractive for an enemy to take out both sniper towers but you have some traps prepared to um, anticipate what the enemy will do. The other um, thing you can quite build your base with more than one sniper tower is to place your sniper towers uh, more symmetrical. In this case, the base is quite very good built. It's not completely symmetrical, but this is definitely more spread out. So you cannot easily take out both sniper towers from one single side. You have to rally somewhere over here to get access to both sniper towers. Now let's imagine what would be if, or in which case, what would be in the case if one of the sniper towers of this sniper tower would also be over here. So the sniper towers would be both very symmetrical placed in the base and you have have quite no chance to get easily access to both of them and that makes it for an enemy attacker quite harder to decide from where to attack. So the enemy attacker has quite to think more about from where to come because he also he now cannot say Ah, okay, both sniper towers are in range. Let's take just simply this route over here from the embassy. He has to mention, okay, probably I want to get rid also of some stables or I could get uh, the, probably the castle, air defense and towers. And so the decision-making process for the enemy gets way harder if you have placed them very symmetrical inside your base. Now make for yourself clear which, uh, which method you want to choose. Whether to make it attractive for the enemy and um, get the attention of the enemy and and uh, try to get him inside of your traps by position or locate um, both of your sniper towers very close together at one specific side of your base or spread them very symmetrical, most symmetrical like you can in your base and make it the hardest way to decide for the enemy or to choose a specific route. Hopefully this explanation was quite understandable for you. Guys, if you have any more concerns, any more uh, opinions, give me some feedback down in the comment section. Hopefully this was entertaining and some informative for you. We'll see you soon to our next World War Attacks, your domination tips.